Brexit is fiendishly complicated. You've got lots of data, lots of disagreements, and perhaps most of all, lots of terminology. So let's flick through the dictionary and you get a sense of why we are where we are. Let's recall, first of all, that while we have Brexited, in other words, the UK is formally outside the EU, nothing has really changed in practice because we're still in the transition period. But that period comes to an end at the end of this year, at least that's the current plan, which is why we need a free trade agreement. That's what's being negotiated at the moment. Actually, surprising as this might sound, when it comes to trade, in other words, tariffs and quotas on goods we're sending in and out of our borders, the vast majority of it has actually been agreed. There's still some minor disagreements over fishing rights, but really the big sticking point really is something else. This, the level playing field. What does it mean in practice? Well, there are lots of rules which can indirectly affect trade. So environmental standards, workers' rights, state aid for companies. For instance, consider if the UK left and cut its standards, so aimed to become Singapore on Thames, its companies could get a competitive advantage. Or imagine it wanted to subsidise its steel companies. It's all about keeping competition fair. Again, actually, everyone agrees on that in principle. The real sticking point is about how these rules get enforced. So you've got one option, which is that the UK and the EU agree not to diminish any of those rules, non-regression, as it's called. The UK had been previously a bit reluctant to commit to that. After all, it would potentially rule out Singapore on Thames, but now seems keener. But what if, say, the EU wanted to increase regulations? Well, that is where dynamic alignment comes in. This principle says that in the future, if the EU changed its rules on all this stuff, the UK should follow suit. It's worth saying these kinds of demands do go considerably further than you get in other typical trade deals, but the EU argues that given the UK would have zero tariffs and be right on its doorstep, the rules should be tougher. But perhaps the biggest sticking point is about how those rules get enforced. Does it mean in practice the EU is still writing UK law? That, according to the UK side, would be a dilution of British sovereignty. And that's a red line for them. In other words, much of the talks really comes back to this. Can they find a formulation which makes it clear that the UK ultimately has the final say? Or is that totally incompatible with the nature of the EU? We are about to find out.